Morning, Howard. And what brings you in at this ungodly hour? It's not even eight o'clock. I couldn't sleep. It's Mother. She was up all night weeping. I hope you haven't been upsetting her again, Howard. No, it was her ulcers on her legs. They were weeping. I was up all night. Bedclothes were sopping wet this morning. They're totally ruined. I don't know how you do it, Howard. I couldn't do that for my mum. Yes, you could. You'd be surprised. I'd be very surprised. She's in Bogside Cemetery. Don't say that word. What word? Cemetery? Please don't. All men are mortal. Even your mum. Sorry, Howard, I didn't mean to upset you. That's all right. We could go to the cemetery together. Make a day of it. Sundays are such a drag in my house. Oh, cheer up, Howard. She's got years left in her. She's a tough old bird, isn't she? Look on the bright side. You'll probably go before her. Or even better, you'll probably go together at the same time in an accident. I'm sorry I'm being insensitive. Have a tissue. There, blow your nose. There, that's better. Good morning, all, and what a lovely morning. The birds are singing, and I feel like joining them. Howard, what's wrong? Your eyes are red. It's Doris. She's been up all night weeping. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Howard. What's wrong with her? Nothing serious, I hope. Oh, don't ask. You don't want to know. We're talking ulcers, pus, flaky skin and soggy, very soggy bed sheets. Some of Mother's ulcers burst last night. I thought I heard something. About two o'clock-ish. Let me make you an invigorating infusion of herbal tea, chamomile and elderflower. That should perk you up. Oh, goody. Don't get too excited, Howard. It's only a cup of tea. It's today I'd almost forgotten. Branwell's back. I'm afraid he's right. It's so exciting. I wonder if he'll have changed much. People do when they go away for a long time. I doubt it, Howard. Branwell has spent the last six months safely tucked up at home on sick leave. Not on Devil's Island. I've missed him so much. It's not been the same here these past six months. The peace, quietude and general harmony. Well, it couldn't last forever. Well, Branwell certainly has his fair share of bad points. He more than makes up for it with his... good points. Really? Care to enlighten us about these good points in ascending order? Nobody is perfect, Clifford. I myself am sometimes prone to get irritable when I stand in the ten items or less check out at Asda. It's terrible, I know, uh, but I find myself counting the items in people's baskets. Right, well, I'm off. Got a little job to do in the toilets. Is there really any need for such crudity? What did I say? There's a dodgy soap dispenser in the gents. I'm going to fix it, that's all. <laughs> That's Bran's car. I'd know it anywhere. There's only one car in the whole of Bogside that sounds like that. It is! Hazel, it's Bran's car. Look, there he is! Bran! Yoo-hoo! Up here! He's seen me. Oh, look, he's making a sign. What's that, Bran? Two? Really? Branwell! Close your eyes, Howard. That is not the sort of sign I approve of, and neither would your mother. I've a good mind to report him. He doesn't know it's me. He probably thinks it's someone else. Please don't report him. He hasn't even started back yet. Howard, what are you doing with that cushion? Nothing. That's your favourite cushion. What about your piles? Branwell needs it more than I do. He's been sick. Oh, Howard, you are so sweet. Listen, it's him. He's coming. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Bran! Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Bran, you're back. Oh, goody, goody. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Look, Hazel, it's Bran. He's back. Morning, all. Yes, the prodigal son hath returned. Howard, you are frothing. Please stop. You'll ruin your sweater. 
Just think how long it took Doris to knit. Welcome back, Branwell. You're looking very... well. Hazel! Still making your potions? Uh, I mean, infusions. I could smell it from the car park. You look different. You look more... Handsome. More... Rugged. More... Ah, lean. Orange. Oh, I know what you're thinking, and no, it is not a tan, and no, I have not been anywhere near the Costa del Sol. It's a side effect of the tablets. They uh, change your skin tone, amongst other things. You're glowing, Bran. The break has obviously done you the power of good. Well, I wouldn't say that, Howie. Don't forget, I've been ill. I've had a very close call. In fact, I've been to hell and back. If you've ever flown Ryanair, you'll know exactly what I mean. Now, Oh, that door! It nearly gave me a nervous breakdown last term. You did have a nervous breakdown, didn't you? Howard! You're not supposed to say that. You could put me back months with one careless comment like that. I'm at a very tender stage of my recovery. The doctor said I was to be treated with kid gloves. Ah! Hello. The nutcase has returned, or has he escaped? You keep him talking while I call the asylum. Oh, hello, Clifford. I've really missed you too, old mate. Clifford, don't be insensitive. Branwell's had a very bad experience. So what's it like wearing a straight jacket? For your information, Cliff, I was off with stress, and let me inform you, even the slightest irritation could set it off again. When I'm stressed, I usually have a bath with Jasmine. Well, well, Hazel, now this is a side to you. I have to confess I didn't know I existed. You should have a bath with Jasmine too if you get the opportunity. Wild horses wouldn't stop me. I mean, this Jasmine sounds pretty liberal. Just my type. Stress. You don't know the meaning of the word. Teaching a bunch of bogside, as you call that stress. I'll tell you what stress is. Stress is having shells exploding around you while you have your shredded wheat. Stress is having argy snipers trying to take your head off while you're buttering your muffin. Don't you have anything to do, Cliff? Like, change a light bulb? All done. Well, catch a rat or something. I've heard there's one in the basement. Is there? I'm not going down there, then. Howard? Earth to Howard. Why is he staring at me like that? Howard Hardwick, stop staring at me. He can't believe you're back. Howard has been counting the days for the past six months. I'm sorry, Bran. I've missed you so much. It's been the worst six months of my life. Mother said I was depressed. I even went off my beans on toast. Mother became quite worried. Well, I'm back now, Howie. Everything is going to be OK. So, how's Janet? Have you managed to patch things up? Fat chance. She's met some flash git called Jasper. Oh, he's got a yacht in Bogside Harbour. Oh, Branwell, money isn't everything. You'll win her back. Eventually. She's mad about him. She's even moved into his penthouse apartment. Uh, apparently, he's everything I'm not. What, you mean he's charming, civilised, intelligent and good in bed? Cheer up, Bran. Look on the bright side. What bright side? My life's about as bright as a winter's evening in Gravesend in the middle of a blackout. But at least you sleep with beautiful women every weekend. That must be some consolation. Hmm? All those women you meet in bars. Oh, them. Well, that, that, there's some consolation, I suppose. But there's more to life than random encounters with beautiful women. I need something more. I need fulfilment. <laughs> What's that smell? There. It's just incense. I think we should make the staff room. A haven of tranquillity. Oh, I just remembered I do have a light bulb to change. Deep breaths. All together now. <sighs> it's absolutely wonderful for the chakras. Are you acquainted with the chakras, Brahma? The chakras? Oh, don't they run the Bengal Palace on Bogside High Street? 
I don't suppose you've ever tried their death by curry, have you? Oh, only the brave survive that. Clifford, you're not breathing. Howard, neither are you. Deep breaths now. Mother will be so happy. And how is dear old Doris Howie? Mother is fine. I'll tell her you were asking about her. She likes you. Blimey, she is losing the plot. Uh, tell me, Howie, did you both go to Colwyn Bay for the seventeenth consecutive year? No. We took your advice. And I'm glad we did. What? You mean you didn't go to Colwyn Bay? You and Doris always go to Colwyn Bay. You were right, Bran. Colwyn Bay is very nice, but twelve years is a long time to spend in one place. There's a big wide world out there. I'm very proud of you and Doris Howard. You're both very brave. But where on earth could your wanderlust have taken you? Marbella? Rome? Paris? Rill. Rill. Rill as in North Wales. Rill as in the Welsh seaside town not more than twenty minutes from that other Welsh seaside town called Colwyn Bay. That Rill. Mother really enjoyed herself. We've already booked for next year. Uh, by the way, Howie, are you still seeing that girl, uh, the maths teacher? Harry Haley? She had more facial hair than Brian Blessed. Clifford, Haley was a very sweet girl. She and Howard made a lovely couple. Whatever happened to her, Howard? Wait a minute, now I remember. Didn't she do a runner on your first date? Pity. I had hoped she would have passed on some handy shaving tips. She did not do a runner. She got lost. In the flying horse? She went to the toilets. It does get busy in there. Not on a freezing cold night in January, it doesn't. And I should know. It was a misunderstanding. She thought I'd got fed up of waiting. She thought I'd gone home. Leave him alone. Howard is a gentleman. He treats women with respect. Howard is above vulgarity. Oh, is he now? Oh, you wouldn't say that if you could see him ogling page three of Clifford's newspaper. I mean, look at him. His eyes are on stalks. Do you mind? Buy your own. So much for your theories, Hazel. Oh, don't be fooled by the hush puppies and home-knitted sweaters. Underneath, he's just like the rest of us. I was just trying to see the uh, uh, weather forecast. Don't be ashamed, Howard. The naked body is a thing of beauty. Once upon a time, I used to be a model myself before I became an arts and craft tutor. Don't be surprised. I was a life model. You mean you posed for artists? D did you... were you... Naked, of course. We always posed nude. We? <laughs> Blimey, it was an orgy. Not the same, you arty types. Randy as hell. It's the paint fumes. It was art. Pure art. Pure freedom of the self. And I certainly discovered myself. My body. Its lushness. Its richness. Oh, yes. Um, thank you, Hazel. Uh, that's enough, thanks. Uh, it's a bit early for me, all this talk of richness and lushness. My cornflakes are still digesting. Morning, all. Oh, Branwell, how good to see you again. I do hope you're feeling better after your... Uh, your little, um... Nice to see you again. Well, I had to come back, Vicky. Duty called. I came back for them, the students of Bogside. I couldn't leave them in the lurch. What a wonderful sentiment. Good for you, Branwell. Yes, this is a side to you I never knew existed. I'm very impressed. That's my problem, Vicky. Always putting others before myself. How could I sit there at home, knowing my poor students were here without me? I had to come back. I had no choice. I had to. Why was that, Bran? His sick note ran out. Haven't you got a light bulb to change? Oh, I would have come back anyway. I was missing the old place. I was missing Hazel and her potions, Howard and his sweaters, Clifford and his sensitivity. I was even missing you. So no hard feelings? I'd hate to think there are any sour grapes on your part, Bran. 
I know how much this job meant to you. That job should have been mine. Branwell, remember what the doctor said? Rest, harmony, tranquillity. Surely we can all live together in peace and harmony. And wear sandals and flowers in our hair. Well, I suppose we could give it a try. Glad to hear it. It's not easy losing out, but if it's any consolation, you lost to the better woman. See you later. Don't look so glum, Branwell. It can't be that bad. Can't it? Oh, look at me. I'm separated. I won't see 40 again. Oh, I drive an old death trap. Eat microwave curries every night. Oh, I lose my dream job to a slip of a girl. Life couldn't get much worse. Oh, unless I've forgotten anything. Is there anything else to add to my list of woes? Howie, and please put your hand down. You're thinning a bit on top. It was a rhetorical question, actually. But do go on, Howie, old pal. And you're worried about the little grey hairs you're getting? You've even started dyeing your hair. Thank you, Howard. Anything else? Your waistline. You're getting a bit worried about middle-aged spread. Thank you, Howard. Oh, Branwell, it's not all doom and gloom. So you didn't get the promotion. But there's much more to life than promotion and money status, I can assure you. But it's not fair, Hazel. I should have got that job. On account of your hard work and dedication? On account that I have been here the longest. I was next in line. Branwell, this is not the House of Windsor. It's Bogside College. Mr McGregor resigned. He didn't abdicate. Well, I'm glad you didn't get the job. Howard, that's not a very nice thing to say. You would have had to leave the staff room and sit in Mr McGregor's old office. And remember what happened to him. You wouldn't want to end up like him, would you? But McGregor used to polish off a bottle of whisky every day. There is no comparison between me and him. Mac was a tight-fisted, work-shy, sex-obsessed, neurotic Glaswegian with a chip on his shoulder the size of Iceland. There is absolutely no comparison. Somebody tell me there is no comparison between myself and McGregor, Howie? Well, um... Hazel? Well... You're not Scottish. I thank you, dear colleagues, for that vote of confidence. Well, I'm so glad you're back. It's going to be just like old times, isn't it? Not quite, Howard. Victoria's in charge now, and I have a feeling things will be different. Yes, well, that's as may be. But let me inform you, as long as I draw breath, I intend fighting to preserve what we hold dear. And what about our long lunches? I nearly got a break of ten last week with Bran's help. Good point, Howie. That's right. How do you expect me to continue Howie's snooker lessons if we don't retain our long lunches? Have you any idea at all how long a frame takes when you play Hurricane Hardwick? And what about the early finishes? I hardly think there's any justification for them. Well, it might not mean much to you, Hazel, but it allows Howie here to catch the countdown conundrum. It's the highlight of Doris's day. And you wouldn't deny an old lady a little pleasure now, would you? Bran, you are being impossible. I sense a blockage to your yin and yang, and I think I have just the thing. Am I right? Do you have a blockage? As it happens, yes, I do. But that is strictly between myself and my GP. Late starts, long lunches and early finishes. I'm not sure Victoria is quite going to see eye to eye with you over this, Branwell. Really? Oh, you do surprise me, Hazel. Well, we'll just have to see about that, won't we? Hello, Bogside College. Wayne! Babe! Really? Well, that's great news. Eight o'clock? Yeah. I'll see you then, babe. Bye. Kissy, kissy, kissy. Mwah. Good news, Sandy? Wayne got off with a suspended. Apparently, all the jails are full at the moment. Oh, he's taken me out tonight. Sandy, 
What is it exactly you see in Wayne? Let me put it another way. What's he got that I haven't? Apart from a criminal record, pit bull terrier called Rambo. Oh, and enough gold chains to solve third world debt. Oh, he's so lovely and romantic and nice. He says the nicest things to me. Oh, it speaks, does it? But pray tell, what is the most romantic thing that Wayne has ever said to you? Well, the other week he said I had the cutest bum out of all the birds on the Bogside estate. Quite an accolade. And after all, Wayne should know, having inspected most of them. All the girls are dead jealous of me. They'd love to be going out with Wayne. Oh, I'm so lucky. But you caught him snogging your best friend, for heaven's sake. On your birthday! Yeah, but he was really sorry afterwards. When I told him it was over, there was a cute little tear in his eye. He swore he wouldn't let me catch him doing it again. Oh, I'm sure he'll be much more careful next time. He better be. Oi, you're wanted upstairs by the boss. It started already. My first day back and she's already summoning me upstairs. What, well, I can't have done anything wrong yet, can I? Search me. She just said she wanted a little chat with me, you and Howard, or Bramwell's little gang, as she referred to us. Oh, Bram's little gang. Oh, I like that. I can just imagine you all on Bogside Rec wearing short pants. Right. OK, Cliff. I think it's about time we showed Queen Victoria who really runs Bogside College. Come in. Quick march! About time! Stand at ease! Branwell and his little gang reporting for duty, ma'am. Thank you for coming. And for your information, I have not had a gang, little or otherwise, since I was an eight-year-old on Bogside Recreation Ground. Now, you're probably all wondering why I've called you all together. In the past, I believe that things were a little lax under Mr McGregor. Good old Mac. Oh, those were the days. I can still see him sitting at this very desk, a copy of the Racing Post in one end and a bottle of Jack Daniels in the other. <laughs> I mean, I still don't know how he did it. Work here, you mean? Stand up. <laughs> I mean, you have to admire the old bugger. Less than men would have keeled over long ago. I've got a wee certainty in the 340 at Sandown Park. Could you nay lend me a wee tenner, laddie? I'm a little bit short. Talking of which, just exactly how much did he sting you for, Howie? I don't remember. Do I understand you correctly? You are insinuating, if I'm not very much mistaken, that the former head of Bogside College, George McGregor, MBE, was a hopeless alcoholic? Is that what you're saying? Did my esteemed predecessor have a drink problem? Only when he couldn't get one. Which wasn't very often. He used to send Howie here to the off-licence every dinner time. Howard, whatever were you thinking of? Why did you do it? I mean, was it for favour? Or money? Fear? Were you scared of McGregor? Lollipops. He did it for lollipops. Howard has a very sweet tooth. With a particular weakness for those uh, little twisty things. Uh, what are they called now? Aniseed twists. That's the ones. Oh... <sighs> I remember once old Mac sitting there, just like you are now, Vicky. He just had a winner for a change. The drink was flowing. So were the aniseed twists. Far be it from me to cut short your reminiscences, but that is exactly what I intend on doing. Poor old Mac. The old place just isn't the same without him. I do hope Mr McGregor isn't found guilty. Embezzlement is a very serious crime, Howard. I mean, McGregor was practically found with his hands in the till, I believe. Yes... Yes, but, but, but in his defence, he did say he was going to pay it all back. Only he did suffer some horrendous luck. <laughs> That's what you call it. I have a feeling that the judge and jury may think otherwise. But I don't see how he could have stopped that horse falling at the last fence. I mean, it was twenty lengths clear. Well, That's horrendous luck in anyone's book. <laughs> well, the college authorities didn't quite see it that way, did they? McGregor helped himself to a large quantity of college funds. Good old Mac. What an old rascal. Really, this is intolerable. 
Today is the start of a new regime. Regime, eh? Now, why am I getting pictures of rows and rows of little Chinese men? As a history teacher, Vicky, you will know that Queen Victoria reigned for a very long time. Sixty-three years, to be exact. Don't tell me you're going to be here that long. I mean, surely you're just going to use our little college as a stepping stone to better things. You don't actually want to stay here, do you? Sorry to disappoint you, Bran, but I'm here to stay. I happen to like Bogside College. No, you don't. Not really. I'm not arguing with you. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. I mean, I am arguing with you, and I refuse to. I am absolutely determined that we will not become enemies. I'm equally determined that we shall all work together in harmony. In that case, I will take my little gang off then. You see, we've built this cracking little treehouse. Come on, boys. About turn. Quick march. I haven't finished yet. Come back. Who fancies a game of fire? Uh... Oh, cowboys and Indians then. Hmm. Oh, I'll be sitting, Bull. Oh, you should have seen her, Queen Victoria, sitting at Mac's desk. If it's any consolation, Victoria will have a lot of weight on her young shoulders. Ha! Just give me one good reason, just one, why I didn't get that job. And don't pull any punches. I want you to be totally honest with me, Howie. Any reasons? Um, I don't know if I should. Oh, you go right ahead, old pal. Oh, and don't let anything stop you, uh, like loyalty or the fact I give you a lift home every evening. Will we still be friends? I don't think this is a good idea, do you, Bran? You know how Howard tends to take things very literally. Well, go on, Howie. One good reason why I didn't get the job. <laughs> Struggling, are we? Well, not exactly. You are a little lazy sometimes. Six months was a long time to be off. Me? Lazy? I had stress. It wasn't a holiday. I have another reason why you failed to get the job. You are sometimes a wee bit, how can I put this, argumentative. No, I'm not. Who says I am? That is rubbish. And you'd have to admit, you can be a wee bit offensive. Who asked you anyway, you old witch? Stay out of it. Aggressive. You can be aggressive. Oh! <laughs> aggressive, eh? Explain yourself, Howard Hardwick. Come on. I'm not going to put you down until you have explained yourself. And it's no use whimpering either. Branwell, put Howard down at once. You're choking him. There, 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 there. That's better. Just straightening his tie. That's all, Hazel. <coughs> yes, thanks, Bran, for straightening it. It was a bit offline. That's it. 3.35. I'm off. Going somewhere, Branwell? Yes. You see, Selina's on her own, and she gets a bit wild if I leave her alone all day. Last time I got home late, she nearly took a chunk out of my leg. Then you ought to choose your girlfriends more carefully. Selina is a cat. Oh, Janet wanted to take her, but I hung on to her. So, I'll see you all tomorrow. You're not going anywhere until we get something straight. Right, now that I have your full attention, I shall begin. Would you like to sit down, boss? No, thank you, Howard. I'm fine. Would you like a cup of herbal tea? Coffee? Any seed twist? No, thanks. I just wanted to say that I hope my getting this job is not going to change anything around here. Apart from turning Howard into a grovelling sycophant, I dare say things will remain pretty much the same. I'm not one to bear grudges. That's the spirit, Branwell. Oh, I can feel the karma returning already. I don't want us to get off on the wrong footing. Branwell, I know we haven't seen eye to eye since I arrived here at the college. We're different, you and I. I had noticed. Come on, Howie. I haven't got all night. Stay where you are, Howard. Howard Hardwick, get your coat. Um, Branwell, please 
back of the karma. Sorry, Hazel, but we've got the dartboard booked at the flying horse. Come on, Howie, look sharp. Howard's not going anywhere. Oh, 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 dearie, dearie me. Oh, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to brainwash us all. Well, it won't work. We're made of sterner stuff, us bogsiders. Branwell, don't talk nonsense. Nobody's brainwashing anybody. That's it. That's what you do, you brainwashers. You pretend you're not doing it. Howie, coat. Howard is too busy marking. I'm too busy marking. What? Very well. Suit yourself. Uh, come on, Cliff. We've got a couple of pints of our names written on them. Come on. Chop, chop. Clifford is going to finish off doing the heaters. I'm going to finish off doing the heaters. You see? It's happening already. She's doing it. Well, you won't get me. <laughs> no, you're not going to get into my mind and suck at its contents. In all fairness, mate, nobody would want to go that far. Even a hyena on the brink of starvation would pass on that one. Ha, ha. Right. Well, that's it. I'm off. Anyone? Howie? Last chance? Cliff? No? Very well. Off I go, then. Well, good night. Adieu. Adios. Hmm. Well, good night, Bran. Have a nice evening. Oh, yes, I will. Don't do anything I wouldn't. I'm very impressed, Victoria. That was a battle well won. Thank you, Hazel. But somehow, I have a feeling the war is far from over. <laughs> <laughs>